こんにちは、ゆうこ先生です。Today I want to use this lesson to answer a question about ひらがな that I received from so many students. Some ひらがな letters are written in two different ways. Why? Many of you must have wondered about these two letters, ki and sa. There are two types of these letters. Why is that? Let me explain the reason and then also which one you should learn to write. The one on the left is called Mincho font, and the one on the right is called Kyokasho font. In the majority of printed models, such as books, newspapers, magazines, and websites, This Mincho font is widely used. So I believe when you type hiragana on your computer or phone, you will get this version. If you want to check, you can quickly type ki or sa on your phone now and see which one you will get. I'm pretty sure that you get this version, Mincho font. Now, let me add my handwriting of these two letters here. So, this is how I write ki and then sa. Which font looks closer to my handwriting? Right, kyokasho font, right? This is the version of hiragana that we, native Japanese, learn in school when we study hiragana for the very first time as a child. To avoid confusing young Japanese children who are still learning hiragana, The textbooks for the first and second graders in Japan are all printed in this font. Kyokasho means textbook in Japanese. So, Kyokasho font means the font that is used in textbooks. I don't know why they didn't stick to Kyokasho font to print all the materials in Japan. That, I don't know. Maybe people in the publishing industry felt Mincho font looks more stylish or something? I don't know. But as they created more and more fancy looking fonts, some hiragana letters end up looking quite different between the original handwritten version and the printed version. But you actually see the same thing exists in English too. For instance, when you type the alphabet A, Most of the time you get something like this, right? But my English teacher back in the middle school taught me to write the alphabet A like this. So this is how I write this alphabet, and I believe most of you do too. So the mismatch between the printed font and the handwritten letter do exist in English as well. And please keep in mind, Even though you wrote your sa like this, Japanese people will still read your letter as sa because our brain has been trained to recognize various versions of one single letter like this. They all look sa to native Japanese people. So if you have already developed the habit of writing your sa like mincho font, you can stick with it, okay? But if you are still in the process of learning hiragana or about to start with hiragana, then I highly recommend learning the handwritten version of each hiragana simply because that's how we native Japanese write those letters. That's why I or any Japanese language teachers teach the handwritten versions of hiragana in Japanese classes. Once you master the basic shape of each letter, then from there, You can develop your own handwriting styles. Let me show you some example handwriting by my students at the college. Take a look at their sa. You can see that each person has his or her own style, right? But they all have one thing in common. This part is not connected. Same goes with their ki. Every student's handwriting shows its own character, but they are all consistent in the respect that this part is not connected. 
So ideally, I want you to develop your own handwriting style with the basics in place like my students at the college. Okay, for the rest of today's lesson, I'm going to list other hiragana letters that typically have a difference between the printed font and the handwritten letter. Then I'll teach you how to write the letter correctly in the handwritten version. I'll also leave the timestamps for each letter for your convenience in the description box below. Okay, these are the hiragana letters that you need to be especially careful not to copy the mincho font when you practice writing your hiragana letters. Ki, sa, na, ku, mu, mo, li. By the way, you can download the hiragana chart and the practice sheets on my website. I always use kyokasho font to create hiragana materials, so rest assured that you are not going to learn the wrong shapes of hiragana by using my materials. Okay, let's begin with hiragana ki. This is how you handwrite this letter correctly. Ichi. Stop. Ni. Stop. San. Rush up. Yon. Stop. Hiragana sa. Ichi. Stop. Ni. Rush up. San. Stop. Hiragana na. Ichi. Stop. Ni, stop, san, blush down, yon, a loop at the end, and stop. Point number one. Be sure to stop the second stroke around here. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. Point number two. Keep stroke number three below this line. So you are not shouldn't look like this. Point number three. Please do not do this. Coming down and then whoop. I sometimes see my students write their knot like this. Please do not do it. Be sure to stop for stroke number four. Hiragana fu ichi brush down ni release some brush up yum stop. Make sure to keep stroke number three and then four above the bottom line. So you should write your hu like this. See the number three and then four are placed below the bottom line, right? This is not good. Hiragana mu ichi. Place number on the left side of the square and then ni. Coming down. A loop here. And still going. Goes up and then release. Sun, stop. Keep this loop long and thin and then nicely place it along this line, just like you did for the hiragana su. So be careful not to write your mu like this. Hiragana mo ichi. Release. Ni, stop. Sang, stop. Keep stroke number two and three the same length. Also, be careful not to write you are more too skinny like this or too chubby like this. Hiragana ri. Ichi, brush up. Ni, release. Both strokes are slightly curved like this. They are not completely straight. And stroke number two is almost twice longer than number one. I hope this lesson helped you to understand why there are two ways to write some hiragana letters. You can find the hiragana lessons for all the 46 basic letters on this channel. 
Also, the current complete program, which is a package of the online courses, Japanese 1234, will retire soon in summer 2019 and close its door to new enrollments. If you want to get in before the package is gone, please check the description box below. では、また次のレッスンで会いましょう。